Using mouse and keyboard on your PlayStation 5 is possible on certain games, but there are devices to unlock mouse and keyboard on every game. The fine folks over at Ames and X sent us a couple of adapters that allow just that, and we want to review one of those today. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. As you just heard, you can use mouse and keyboard on a lot of games. The ones that come to mind, Call of Duty, have supported mouse and keyboard for a long time and they continue to support mouse and keyboard. Fortnite as well, mouse and keyboard, just plug it in and it just works. But there are many games that do not support mouse and keyboard. Rainbow Six Siege comes to mind. They actually have active systems to detect if you're using a mouse and keyboard known as Mousetrap. They will implement countermeasures to keep you from continuing to use mouse and keyboard. Now there are certain workarounds to keep your mouse and keyboard functioning on games such as Rainbow Six, and this video is not going to talk about how to do those workarounds. But we do want to do a review of some of these devices that allow mouse and keyboard and show you kind of what they're capable of on your PlayStation 5. Now we have established in previous videos that the PlayStation 5 Slim that I have right here functions exactly the same as the PlayStation 5 Fat. So if you're wondering, does this work on the Fat? Does it only work on the Slim? No, it works on both. In the future, when a PlayStation 5 Pro model comes out, it will work on that as well. How do I know? Well, because I just know and you can trust me. Now, as we discussed, the folks over at Ames and X sent me three such devices. Those are these three right here. Now, they range in different price ranges all the way up to this, which is the monster. This is the Mac Daddy of them all. So we're not gonna talk about these ones today. We're just gonna look at the monster. Now this supports pretty much every game console out there with direct connection, except for the PlayStation 5. To use it on your PlayStation 5, you do need to use remote play or a top secret method that we're gonna test out right here in this video to see if we can bypass the remote play requirement and get this functioning without sending our username and password to a company overseas where they may not be creditable. I'm not saying that Ames and X is not creditable. I'm just saying that this is your username and password. And if you're concerned about sharing it, we will have an option to do this without sharing any of that information. But first things first, let's do a quick unboxing of what's actually in this thing. And then we'll talk about kind of the features and functionality. So the box is actually quite nice. It's high quality, it's full glossy color print it's got on the back uh, kind of details of what comes in this package it is available on amazon and i will put a link in the description this is a fun little slider i'm gonna open it to you guys so you see what's in here before i do Ooh, okay so it starts with a cardboard manual which has writing on it that is so small that even I can't read it and it's very dark. So it's very hard to read. Most important thing to you is gonna be probably this QR code that's on the back because that can be scanned and hopefully get a user manual of some sort if required. Now, obviously the unit is there. I wanna see that last. So let's pop this box out and see what's in this box here. Okay, whoa, okay, okay, okay. So we've got a USB-C to USB a adapter but they also include this which is a USB A to USB C adapter making this guy a USB C to USB C cable now the cable is roughly three feet long it has this braided texture on it which makes it feel very high quality so put that there I've already opened that up now I've got another one here this is same kind of cable but this one has a micro USB end on it which we'll find out if we need that to connect this up or not. And then the third cable, this one's a little bit longer. This one's probably closer to five feet and it is also a USB-C to USB-A cable. Keep in mind, we can use this adapter to make the long cable into a USB-C to USB-C if required. So we've got those three cables, that's awesome. Okay, so that's the unit. We'll just check the rest of the box just to make sure there's nothing else here that we need. Oh, there is, wow. So in the bottom of this box, we've got an ethernet cable, which I'm not gonna open because I don't think I need that. And we've got the actual monster manual. Now this is, it's actually full color. And it even talks about Bluetooth. Does this have Bluetooth support? Okay, 
So it connects through Bluetooth to your app. Does it support wireless Bluetooth controller? Probably not, but it shows you kind of how to connect it to all your different consoles. Now, we're gonna show you exactly how to connect it to your PlayStation 5, because of all of the connections, that is the hardest one to do. And we'll explain why it's so hard in a minute. But let me put this all back. I don't need that like that. All that stuff back in, and then get to the unit itself. Now looking at the unit itself, it's got these little extendable legs and it is designed to stand on these legs, kind of like that. And you know, that might be nice, it's cool. It does have on the bottom here RGB lighting, so it'll light up kind of the desk space in front of you. We can check that out when we hook it up, but I'm gonna fold these legs up and just kind of walk through all of the settings here. So on this side, we have two USB ports, one that shows a keyboard and a mouse, and one that shows a controller. Now this will work just like every other device where it needs an actual legit controller plugged into it for it to work with the console. And that's usually because of how it's grabbing the license key and spoofing the system to thinking that you're using the controller when really you're using a mouse and a keyboard. So they'll do that somehow, some way with most of the connection methods. On the other side, we have another USB port that has keyboard and mouse on it. So you can use one for a keyboard, one for a mouse, or you can do it the other way around. It shouldn't really matter, but this one with the controller definitely needs the controller plugged in to that port. It also has a headphone jack, which in other videos where I've tested products like this, the headphones didn't work. And a lot of people ask, how do you use your headphones? So we're gonna test that this time. I'm gonna try to not forget because when I'm gaming, I actually use Astro headset, which is a USB connection. So even though I'm using this device, my sound goes through that separate USB connection. So for all of you who use headset plugged into your controller and need a port like this, We'll test it out and see how that works. Coming around to the back, we have two USB-C ports. Now, one is just for external power. If you're using like lighted keyboard, RGB keyboard, and it uses a lot of power, you won't be able to just pull the power from your system USB. You will need to add external USB power. So that's what this is for. You can plug that into a power brick and it just gives the extra power required to power this device, power your keyboard, and still communicate with your PlayStation 5. We also have the ethernet connection on here. I will tell you quickly how to do that connection if that's the one that you wanna do. Basically, you plug the ethernet connection into your router or use an ethernet over power line adapter, but one way or another, this needs to get connected to your home network wired. It has to be a wired connection. You want that anyway because it will give you the best connection. Then you will have to use the app to set up all your PlayStation credentials and then it will log in essentially using remote play. There might be some lag introduced. Usually there's not. I've tested products like this in the past where it uses that remote play connection and the lag is low or imperceivable at all. But if you can bypass it, that is the better way. And that's what we're gonna try today. There is a button on the top, which will set different mode settings. And that is about it. Now, the unit itself is actually pretty sturdy. It's got some weight to it. It's solid, like I can't twist it, I can't bend it. The legs kind of click into place really nicely. Once it's down, it's, it's sturdy. It feels like a very, very solid unit. First off with the compatibility, this supports PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, and Nintendo Switch. So it supports pretty much every modern console for the last 10 years. Does it support PlayStation 2? I actually suspect if you could get a USB adapter, you could get this running on PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 as well. But interestingly, the functionality starts when consoles started to include USB connections. That's really what the deciding factor is there. Audio, we already talked about. It supports the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to pump all of your audio out. We're gonna test that out and see how that works. Plug and play, programmable with Geek Vice app. So we're gonna download that app and check that out as part of the setup process, but it is app controlled. So you can do specific key binds to you know, map 
the keys from the controller to specific keys on your keyboard. And same with your mouse, you can swap all those settings around and you can actually save those settings in the app for different games. So if you're playing multiple games, you can certainly go and select the game that you're playing this time with your custom mapped keybinds. So you always have the ability to swap easily from one game to another game while using your mouse and keyboard. So the next thing is to hook it up and do our initial setup and boot up on the PlayStation 5. So let's jump over there and we'll see how that goes. Now I'll walk you through the proper way to connect this first and then I'll show you the bypass for the PlayStation Network connection. So the first thing we need to do is connect the LAN cable to your router. So we're gonna pretend we've done that and we're gonna move on to the next step. Now we need to plug an actual legit PlayStation 5 controller into the side port right here with the controller marked on it. We're gonna do that with one of the supplied cables and we're simply gonna plug this in like that and then we'll plug this in like this. That's step number one. Step number two is to plug a mouse in to one of your mouse ports on here. So we're gonna stick this in on this guy over here, just like that. And then step number three, obviously is to connect your keyboard. Now, please don't make fun of the keyboard that I'm using. It's the keyboard that I've got. You can certainly use whatever keyboard it is that you want. If you've got a better one, use that better one. So go like that. And the next step is to use this cable that they provided us to plug. Now this has the USB-C adapter because it's a PlayStation 5 Slim, I need to use that adapter to plug into the front port just like that. Now, if you have a PlayStation 5 Fat, you can plug it into the regular USB port on there. Now, one of the questions that a lot of people ask is, do I have to use the front port? No, you don't have to use the front port if you're on a PlayStation 5 Slim. If you want to plug this in the back for a cleaner look, you can certainly plug it into the back. I'm just plugging it into the front because that's what you can see in this video so that you can follow all of the connections. Now, I'm going to plug this into the controller Port there immediately our RGB is on and now I should be able to press the PS button but there's no PS button on there now we're logged on to the PlayStation 5 and the first thing we need to do now I actually had to cheat a little bit so I actually unplugged the PlayStation 5 controller got onto the PlayStation 5 now we have to do the pairing process of the Ames and X monster adapter using our app. So I'm gonna pull out my Android phone and so we need to go to our Play Store and we're gonna look up the Geek Vice. I'm guessing that's it, Geek Vice. And then that will somehow pair to this. Now we're gonna just fumble our way through here because I didn't read the instructions. Now I'm sure the instruction manual tells you exactly how to do this. And I do know that the Ames and X YouTube channel has instructions exactly how to connect this up. So if there's anything missing, you can certainly check that out. We want to just get through this quickly so we can test it on our PlayStation 5. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna add a device while using the app. Sure. So there we go. It just found the monster. You heard it beep to say that we found it. Now it's asking me, what system are we connected to? Now, I'm gonna first tell it that we're connected to a PlayStation 5. So you can see on the app actually, it says choose console type. We're in universal right now. And then if I say PlayStation 5, it's gonna want to bind to my PlayStation 5. Now I don't want to actually go through that because now it's asking me for my PlayStation login, which if you don't want to do that, you probably don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna show you the alternative method and that is to go to the universal. So I gotta change how we've hooked up. So. If you're doing it through the other method, follow the instructions to get through there and then we'll come back to the functionality. But I wanna try using my B Savior U5 dongle. Now you guys have seen me use this dongle many times before to do all kinds of magical things. So we're going to get even more cables out here. I'm gonna use the B Savior U5, bypass the network play need or requirement on here and make that work. So the next step now, we are still on the app. We're going to tell it this is a PlayStation 4. Now it's gonna tell us, here's how to connect for a PlayStation 4. And then we're gonna say, okay, equipment mismatched. So I have bad news initially. I got you guys' hopes up that we were going to not have to use P3 
PSN connectivity to use this on our PlayStation 5. It looks like whenever I try to connect, it gives me this error of equipment mismatch. No matter what I try to do, it is not bypassing that. To use it on the PlayStation 5, I definitely have to use my PlayStation Network account. So if you have trust issues about giving your username and password to a third-party company, you may want to reconsider this device. This is my honest opinion, okay? I've used devices such as the guys up over here, the B-Loader, the B-Savior, and all of that, and I haven't had any downside from sharing my information, but it, you wanna make sure that it's a company that you trust. Now, these guys obviously want to be a company that you can trust, and this is the connection method to make it work on your device. So for us to continue further, I need to enter my PlayStation Network credentials following the format that you would see online. I'm not gonna walk you through the actual connection. We're just gonna come back once I've done that process. Let's recap where we're at. We tried the B-Savior U5. Unfortunately, the Ames and X monster is persistent in insisting that it uses an ethernet connection and remote play functionality. So unfortunately, the B-Savior U5 does not work with this device or I could not get it to work. So I have logged in using remote play following the instructions in the manual. We are now connected using remote play and I can click OK. And then in here, we can now see this is just a general PlayStation 5 configuration. We have the ability to adjust a lot of the settings within the app. And some of the interesting things I'm gonna see right off the bat right here aim boost so you can add essentially aimbot so i'm gonna turn that up high we'll boot into probably rainbow six siege actually let's get that running while we're here so i don't know what the enter button is for rainbow six siege space obviously is so we're gonna get into rainbow six siege now the reason i'm using this game is because it traditionally does not support mouse and keyboard so the fact that we can get into the game is proof that this is going to work on any game that would not use mouse and keyboard a lot of guys like to use call of duty now this will work on call of duty as well and it will give you all of the extra functionality that you get in all of the other games that you would not get playing Call of Duty with regular mouse and keyboard if you did not use this device. So now I can have dead zone, I can have ballistic curves, I can have simulations and emulations, I can invert the Y axis and do all kinds of things. We'll turn, I don't know, do we wanna turn smoothness up? I don't know. I don't know the answers because I haven't tried it really yet, but and then I can add a config and then I can look for games like you can see Call of Duty. So let's try Rainbow Six. So I'll just add the Rainbow Six keybinds and then, oh, we should turn that on like that. So now it's gonna turn it on in whatever settings I should have. So you can see I'm using my keyboard here now. And then I can open up the settings here and it tells me my game settings. So vertical sensitivity, left stick, dead zone, awesome. But I can also adjust this. So if I want aim boost, I want aim boost. I suck at this game. I've, I've actually never played it. I just now, this is not a tutorial on how to play this game, Rainbow Six, because I just barely completed the tutorial just to get into this game here so that we can see what's going on. I've got this probably the stock operator skin, whatever. So, BDS, Inherit, Rocker, I don't know. Keys, so here's all of my keys. So you can change all your key binds. Now, if you have specific keys that you prefer to use, then this will obviously map those keys out exactly how you think. Let's hit save, save, and we'll just go into the game. So I'm gonna, new playlist available, quick match arcade event. Oh, uh, we wanted to know if the headphones work. So I'm gonna plug my headphones in here. Let's see. Now, I don't know how to adjust the volume on here. Does the app adjust the volume? It saw. Oh, cool. I can change the RGB color. So if you don't, I'm sorry, I'm getting super distracted here. I can make it breathe. You guys can see. So you've got full functionality of the colors for the RGB to be whatever the heck you want. Red and blue swirl. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. How do I adjust my headphones? 
Now these normally work. Do the headphones work on here? You know what I probably need to do? So I've adjusted my settings on my PlayStation because I don't normally use these a wired headphones. So it's trying to go out to a USB headset. Pro controller, oh, there we go, okay. I can hear volume. Game voice chat, let's turn this on, your voice won't be heard. And then audio balance. I wonder if this lets me do 3D sound. Again, I don't want it to really change all my sound settings, but audio output, ah, there we go. Okay, definitely getting sound effects. Does it let me do, interesting, okay. So 3D audio seemed to be working, which is good. Volume's working. Let's see if the microphone works. Testing, testing, testing. Microphone is working. You can see it working there. I'm gonna turn it down, it's very sensitive. This mic's not very good, it's getting old. Microphone status will be logged on. Does mute work? No. Okay, now we're back in the game. And what do we do? Clearance level 10 required, clearance level five required. So it seems that I can't, how do I, what's the O button? So I told you guys I don't know what I'm doing. I've played, I really don't want to go to that. Well, let me play this. Okay, I can play standard. Now I'm gonna take the mic off because I don't actually want them to hear me talking to you guys while I do this, but is matchmaking happening? Okay, let's go, let's do it. Estimated wait time, holy. So we're gonna just jump into the game and then I'm gonna just test this out. Will Mousetrap catch me? Probably after a few games, but the nice thing is with this box, it has a lot of customizable options on here. So potentially you could adjust these options in such a way that it would be very difficult for it to tell the difference between your mouse and keyboard and using analog sticks, depending on how that uh, mouse trap actually works. But here we are in the game that I've never ever played before. Okay, I've never played an online game. All I wanna see is mouse and keyboard moving around, shooting, firing, whatever. And I'm gonna go random. I have no idea, I'm, let's see, I don't even know how to do, I don't know what the O button is. What's the O button? Now what are we waiting for? I feel so bad. I feel so bad for my team. They are, hopefully these are just a team full of noobs because they're about to get really upset at me. I wanna put these kickstands up so that I get a little bit more. Okay, so you can see, I mean, this is really smooth. Now, if I paid attention in the tutorial, I'd know exactly what I'm doing right now. Five seconds before insertion. So the headphones are working good. I, I don't even know how to run. There we go, I was crouched this whole time. Whoa, whoa, I'm getting shot. Whoa, I'm gonna die. Whoa, I did die. So we've done the hookup. We've done kind of making the connections all work. It's time to talk about what our impressions are. So ultimately, what do I think of the Ames and Nix monster device? It's actually really good as long as you have your expectations in check. The remote play was a bit of a surprise on the PlayStation 5, but that is only a problem for PlayStation 5. It will work absolutely flawlessly for every other console that you can imagine. And on the PlayStation 5, it does still work. It's just using remote play. Now it should be able to be updated to use the same methods that the B Savior U5 uses. And maybe if the Amazonix team are watching this video, you might wanna consider that or let me do some testing to see if we can make it work with that device if you don't wanna make that dongle. Because I know that the B Savior U5 is made to enhance devices like this to bypass that remote play connectivity requirement. But once you are in, it's actually very handy with the app. You do have certain enhancements that you can do and some might even consider it cheating. Now, it doesn't give you like God mode, but it does let you use your mouse and keyboard in games that wouldn't normally support it. And it lets you enhance the functionality of games that even do support it. So it's a well-rounded device, well worth the money. It's actually one of the most inexpensive, fully featured mouse and keyboard devices that you can get. And it is very comparable to devices such as the Zim, or even the Cronus Zen, if you're trying to use mouse and keyboard with that. It does have basic, macro functionality and certain enhancements that makes it 
a top-notch device. Now that you've seen how it hooks up and how it plays, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you think this is the product for you, you can certainly check out the links in our description to go and get them from the Amazon Web Store. Special thanks to Amazonix for sending us this unit to do this review. We do have the ability to provide all of our honest feedback. So even though we did get the product, I'm not sitting there pumping this up just because they sent it to me for free. And in future, I don't particularly use devices like this normally. So we'll probably look at doing some sort of a giveaway on the channel for people who can win this or some of these other devices to try and help give back to the community that helps support these videos. So make sure that you know how to win products on this channel because they will come up in future videos and you never know when. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.